Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel. And what we're doing now as we're, as we're moving to Deuteronomy, we are set in a foundation for the children of Israel. Their fathers, their grandfathers, their, aunt, their uncles have all died. This is a new generation coming up. Deuteronomy is the book of the law for them that are going to go into the land. It's almost like Leviticus, but there are changes. Unto the statutes and unto the judgments. When you go into that land, there is laws. You're to obey the laws of God, set by God, which I teach you. For to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land, the land, the land, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So the very first thing is when you get in that land, you are obeyed the laws of Moses. Somebody comes up with another law that does not go in and comprehend with Moses then it's not of God Moses in the five books Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy that is your law books when you go into the land ye shall not add unto the word which I command you neither shall ye diminish or from it so if you were to take Genesis 1 to Deuteronomy chapter, last chapter in Deuteronomy is number 34. 34. And you would take the King James Bible of Genesis 1 to Deuteronomy 34. And match it with all the modern Bibles. And the additions and subtractions. You would find it in violation of what we read here. And you'll find this in the New Testament. You'll find this in the book of Revelation. But I checked Deuteronomy 4, verse 2. And with the changes of diminished, they add another word. They change the word. Not. That, ver that verse in the modern Bibles are almost verbatim, except for it's given another word, which still, that's not what the word is. It says diminish. So, modern Bibles are already against what we have here. There's 61 other books in the Bible, and they've been tampered with by the modern Bible. They removed Jesus' blood. They removed the deity of Jesus. Diminish from it, that means you take away. They removed the fact is that the Ethiopian eunuch believed by faith, then was baptized. I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now, as far as the seriousness of the law, we're talking about Israel. We're not talking about the church. What would be the error if somebody were to remove anything from Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy? For the Israelite. It could damn their soul. What if someone said, well, it really wasn't a goat. It was, I don't know. any. You name any animal that they want to do. After all, we read through the Bible. We found that there were asses in the wilderness that were found by somebody. And they say it was hot springs. And if it says, you know, you're to bring two of something. Well, it's not really two. It's if you were to change the law for the Israelite, it could damn their soul and they'd be cut off. If you do it for a Christian, there's loss of rewards. 
But when you're looking at the law and God says you better keep it exactly how it is because it affects your soul. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, Numbers 33, 28. That's Balaam. That's fornicate with the gods and eat with the dead. Halloween. So the children of Israel that are still alive, that are going into the land, that did not die the 40 years, were there for the Baal Peor. They knew exactly what happened. And it will come up in Joshua again when they build that altar to Ed. I believe it is. This is so serious what happened at Baal Peor. That false god. It, it, it's brought up several times. The Lord thy God has destroyed them from among you. 24,000. So God likens adding and subtracting to the word of God in reference to Baal Peor. The doctrine of Balaam. I will go far as to say in my own personal opinion, anybody that changes the Bible, I will seriously doubt their salvation. That's not a work of God. I mean, there may be times from a pulpit that it, you may quote the verse and misquote it, but you're not doing it purposely. And even then we should use more care. But when someone sits down with a pencil or pen and a piece of paper, I, erase that. It's likened to Baal Peor. You need to go back to number 33 and read what happened there. You need to study again Baal. Get the audio, get the, the videos we have with everything about Baal, uh, Baal Peor and about Baal. That's a serious offense. And Balaam died in the land that caused the fornication. And whoredoms. And I'm not talking about whoredoms going by a woman. I'm talking about the whoredoms of false gods. You got to read your Bible. There are people out there who have images. And what's the Bible say again? There are people out there correcting the Bible. What's it say about it? These people that use modern Bibles, have they ever read from Deuteronomy 4? We've read through Deuteronomy 4. I have a King James Bible. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord, your God, are alive every one of you this day. So there were those that did not take part in that Baal Peor. And they're standing there with Moses right now. There's some of you, you're clean. You had nothing to do with that. But you remember. Behold, I have taught you statutes. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. That ye should do so in the land. In the land. When you get there. You see the prophecy? In the land. You're going. Whether you go to possess it. And that job is a pastor. It's a husband. And it's a father to teach. Don't rely on your pastor to teach your children and your wife. Don't you rely on that Sunday school to, this for your children. That's only 30. That's only an hour and 45 minutes a week for most families. And the rest of the time, you're going to trust whoever? Keep, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. The Gentiles, the Queen of Sheba, the Ethiopian eunuch. You are to be a testimony to those worlds that you're living above them. Because you have the God of all gods, Jehovah. You are to do things that the law will tell you to do to say you're weird. You don't eat pork, but everybody else does. You have a circumcision. No one else does. You get out on the street and you yell and holler. No one else does unless you walk to the grocery store today. They call me weird. <laughs> but I have taught you statutes and judgments even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land. You're not there yet, but you will be. Whether ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom, your understanding, in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, Surely, 
This great nation Israel is wise and understanding people. Where's the knowledge? Wisdom and understanding. Verse 5, I have taught you. There is the knowledge. From your fathers teaching you, that comes knowledge to you. You get wisdom and understanding. And with your family, you take what you know from the wisdom and understanding and you pass it on to your family. Now, if you don't know nothing, you're not going to pass on wisdom and understanding. That's why the churches and families are failing today. The men in the family don't know nothing. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? And it's not America. As the Lord our God is in all things that we can that we call upon him for. That only one nation is the nation of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what nation is so great? Not America. America thinks that. If you were to read verses 7 and 8 publicly in the streets of America, they, they would pack their bed and wrap around the red, white, and blue. But verse 1 says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel. Look at that. That has statutes and judgments. Don't we have statutes and judgments in, in America? Yes, we do. So righteous as all this law. There's a law now in the books that two sodomites can get married. That's not in the law of Moses. That's not in the law of God. It's not righteous. Which I set before you this day. What's Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, parts of Exodus? It's a righteous law. It's a law that when you go in and establish your nation under God, you be a holy nation, a particular nation. Only take heed to thyself. Uh-oh. Be warned. And keep thy soul diligently. Least thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen. Man forgets. And least they depart from thy heart. You got to put it in your heart. Work on your memory verses. Keep on with your memory verses. If you don't, you'll be forgotten. All the days of thy life. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And don't forget them. Teach them to thy sons. And thy sons' sons. It's not the public school system. And it's not your Sunday school teacher. Sunday school came only as a product in America. I forget what year that was. But there was no Sunday school. A time in America, there was no midweek service. And when you were out there milking the cows and planting the crops and taking care of your family, it was also the part where the man would gather his family together where there was no television set and there was no radio. They would gather together, mom in her favorite chair and him in his favorite chair with the children. They would open up the Bible and read the Bible to their family with grandma and grandpa helping. And the kids would know about the word of God. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb. Talking to that new generation. When the Lord said unto me. Gather me the people together. And I will make them hear my words. And they may learn to fear me all the days. You to fear God. Now God is not going to send a lightning bolt down to your skull to your feet if you sin. But we ought to fear God like you would. There's no fear of God in today's churches. Laughing, lying, fooling around. We ought to be serious in the house of God. All the days that they shall live upon the earth. And that they may teach their children. What you teach your children is going to teach their children. And their children. And their children. And it has not been taught. And that's the failure of the children of America today. And of England. And all the nations that forgot God. Including the Jews today. The things that they do for the Passover and for the celebrations of the Bible has nothing to do with the Bible. They've gone away from it. And I talked to Jews about that. It's Jews who've gotten saved. 
If they taught the Bible, well, the Torah, like they were supposed to, they would recognize Jesus Christ as the Savior, as the Messiah. But they didn't. It's the Father's job to teach the children. And he came near and stood under the mountain. I don't understand that, under the mountain. Because I've never been to a mountain. And the mountain burned with fire. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was that Mount Sinai? Verse 10 said Horeb. So Mount Sinai has a name called Horeb and Sinai. Wait a minute, that's Exodus 20. That's where God gave the Ten Commandments, spoke orally first. Moses came down to the Ten Commandments, broke it because they made a calf, went back up, got the new Ten Commandments. The children that were there in Exodus 20 are here now. And Moses said, you saw all that. And unto the mist of heaven, with darkness, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. He heard the voice of the words. But saw no sin with you. You didn't see anything. This is what happened to Paul on the road to Damascus. He heard Jesus, but he didn't see Jesus. Only he heard a voice. So you could not draw a picture of what you saw that afternoon. You could not articulate to someone well his face was you know you can't do that it was only a voice and can you imagine how holy that voice was and yet that's not a holy voice that you're going to hear God in heaven because there was darkness there's no darkness in heaven that voice that God stood amongst a sinful people on a sin cur cursed world earth because of Adam Oh, when we get to glory, New Jerusalem, we hear those cherubim, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Can you imagine how heavenly sound that can be that our ears have never, ever heard. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments is, is a covenant. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And tables would be a tablet. When you go to the store, you, in the paper stationery, you see this little pad of paper. It's called a tablet. There it is. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments. That's what been Moses has been doing all along. That ye might do them in the land, whether ye go over the possess that land. There's the promise again. You're going. This is the foundation of laws and regulations set forth. The rest of the book of Deuteronomy is going to set forth those laws, those statutes. So when you go in the land. Now here we go. Here we begin. Take ye therefore good heed. Good heed. Verse 9 said take heed. Verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake un, unto you in Horeb out of the midst of fire. You didn't see no pictures. Least ye corrupt yourselves. Uh oh. And make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, and no in between. So when you make that, that statue of Mary, God said, don't do it. When God said, you know, no male, and you got that big belly button God cross-legged, God said, no. When you got Jesus on the cross, no. Why can't people get the Bible straight? Chapter 4, don't change the Bible. They change the Bible. Chapter 4, don't make idols. Don't make images. And they're all around. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. No monkeys. Don't make a statue of what you think evolution came from. The likeness of any winged fowl. That flieth in the air. The American bald eagle. The symbol of America. God said no. 
The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. Snakes are a great thing for people that creep on the ground and make images and tattoos of them. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And how can you have a fish and say it's Christian when God said no? How about that? He said F I S H. Don't do it. Don't make it. It's Jesus. It's Christian. It's a abomination. And least thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun, I see the sun. I've seen beautiful sun sunrises, and the moon. There's been beautiful moons. And the stars, there's, the other night we took the dog out, there were beautiful stars out there, they were so bright. Even all the hosts of heaven, planets, meteors, everything else that's out there. Now here's the problem. And should be driven to worship them. See, there's nothing going out there looking at the sun and, and looking at the stars in amazement of God's creation. But when you start to worship them and serve them. Thank my lucky stars. Oh, I got to open up the newspaper and see what my horoscope is for today. You know the signs of the times you find in Genesis 1 of the sun, moon, stars, the seasons? That brought the wise men to Jesus. Now, they weren't worshiping the stars. They used, There are the olden days before computers. Ships would master themselves and their decree of their latitude and longitude and where they were and where they were going by the stars of heaven that's not worshiping that's an aid of navigation when you build your life upon the fact is hello yeah i want to do something today does my lucky star say i no, i can't do it today okay then you don't do it which the Lord thy God has divided among all nations under the whole heaven. Something about those navigation, something about those stars, those things that are in under, I mean the nations that are under them. There's a division of the solar system to the nations of the, of the earth. I don't understand that. But the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. Iron's a bad thing in the Bible. We read about a giant that had a bed of iron. Iron furnace. That's hot. There's going to be a furnace that's going to put Meshach, Shadrach, Indigo to burn. And they don't burn. Even out of Egypt. God likens Egypt to an iron furnace. Egypt is likened to the world. Be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. God said, I brought you out of Egypt. I'm going to give you an inheritance. It's going to be yours by me. We're taken out of the world. We're supposed to be taken out of the world. Most Christians don't live like it. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sake. Oh, boy. Look at chapter 3, verse 26. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes. That hasn't changed. Moses is still blaming him. And it was his anger. And swear that I should not go over Jordan. That I should not go unto the good land. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. What, 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 what's that? Wait a minute. Let's read this again. I shall not go over Unto the good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Got that? But I must die in the land. I must not go over Jordan. So what did you do? Give Reuben and Gad and half tribe of Manasseh that land where you are right now where you're going to die. He just spoke. We're not in the land. And yet two and a half tribes have taken the land where Moses is now. But ye shall go over, except for two and a half tribes, and possess the good land. That's the good land, not this one. And yet Moses shows no bitterness. Look at that. It's your fault, but let's move on. 
Take heed unto yourselves, another take heed. Least you forget, don't forget, the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, oh boy, here we go, and a likeness of anything. All right, over here with male, female, beasts, creepy things, fish. In case I forgot something, let's just make it any likeness of anything. Do you realize Philistines are going to get whipped and the wrath of God is going to fall upon them and they're going to make images of the mice and the emeralds that God gave them by having you're not supposed to be doing that. God completely forbids anything to do with imagery and idolatry for worship and yet aids to worship. A lie. Which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. Got it? Read it? Understand. Show that show those verses to a Catholic person. That's nice verses. There's nothing wrong with those. You know, just your idolatry, God says I forbid it. Now what are you gonna do? It's there, black and white, King James. Imagine what the modern Bibles do. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. I believe that's found in Hebrews. Even a jealous God. God's jealous when you have that. As much as a husband or wife get jealous with, with their spouse involved with someone else, there's God. I'm jealous. Consuming fire, that's hell. That's burning. But there's no consumption in hell. The wrath of God is hell. And you end up in hell for idolatry. And there have been people burnt up in the Bible. Because of idolatry. When thou shalt beget children. And children's children. Prophecy. And ye shall have remain, remain long in the land. Look at that prophecy. Joshua. Samuel. All the kings. Ezra. Nehemiah. Even when Jesus. Ye shall corrupt yourselves. Oh Moses. And make a graven image. Graven image is result of corruption. Corruption is a result of graven image. Have you ever seen a battery terminal? You open up your car and that thing has been cakered and gross and corrupted. Or the likeness of anything. Throw that anything in. Make sure you don't miss it. Anything. And shall do evil in this. Oh, evil idolatry, imagery, evil, corruptness. Have you got it? You understand? It's wrong. You ask my wife, you ask my daughter, when we're in the street ministry, we'll ask people, are you saved? Are you a Christian? What's the, some of the things they, they'll show us, their, you know, their necklace? They'll show us a tattoo. Show them in the Bible, give them a Bible. In the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. Look at sight of God. You're involved in those idolatry. It's in God's sight. And it makes God angry. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. Ooh, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land. The Gadites, the Reubenites, and the half tribe of Manasseh go first. Then northern Israel goes next. And then Judah goes. Moses is a prophet. Whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it, ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed because of idolatry and imagery. The Israel's captivity is 2 Kings 17. Judah's captivity is 2 Kings 25. Israel goes 828 B.C. plus or minus. And Judah goes 598 B.C. And I don't have the one here about Gad and missed that. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Gentiles. Peter and Jonah would have loved that. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Gentiles. Whether the Lord shall lead you. In Poland, the Jews have no rights, I am told. 
And here and there shall ye serve gods, small g o d s, the work of man's hands, wood and stone. That's Nebuchadnezzar's image, and that's a representation of what nations. Need which neither see, they're blind, nor hear, they're deaf, nor eat, nor smell. I'm, you come to me and you bring me that image or idolatry, God says it's blind, deaf, dumb, stupid, and can't have an appetite. Paul calls them dumb idols. God calls it abomination. Hey, I'm just reading the Bible. I, if I kicked you, I'm sorry not because I read the Bible. I came out of this mess. I had an aunt that was truly into marrying all this mess. But if from thence, if you're in the nations, from thence thou, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. You, Daniel seeks the Lord. Thou shalt find him. Nehemiah searches the Lord. If thou seek him with all thy heart, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with all thy soul, Jesus said, if a man loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul, there it is. There it is. Daniel does that. When thou art in, now watch this, now watch this one. Tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee. Raven image, isn't there an image made to the Antichrist? And all the nations got to receive his mark. Oh. All right. So when thou art in tribulation, all these things are come upon thee. Even in the latter days. Look at that. There is a reference to the tribulation period. Just before the Messiah comes, the second advent. Tribulation period. That word tribulation, verse 30. That's the first place that word shows up. And you see latter days. Look at that prophecy. And they're not even in the land yet. And Moses has already warned them about Jacob's trouble. If thou turn to the Lord thy God in the tribulation time. And shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. So in the midst of that tribulation period, when those Jews like, my God, we're, we got to get right with God. Daniel got right with God. And then Nehemiah and Ezra built that temple, built that city back. They went back. We got to seek God. We got to pray to God. We got to repent of our sins. And in the midst of that tribulation period, God says, I hear you. And even before then, he sends out 144,000 to reach the Jews. And to make sure things are correct, he sends Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. And when they resort to God and repentance, God says, I'm merciful, I'm mighty, I have not forgotten you. It's the restoration of the nation of Israel at the second advent. And there are some people say, God's all finished with them. Explain to me verse 31 then. After the tribulation of the end times, 31 is the second advent of Jesus Christ coming for those Jews. Now I'll be right behind them all the way, literally. For as now the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man, oh, God creator, upon the earth, we didn't come from outer space. We came from the earth. That shoots down another religion. The religion out there, the one. we come from outer space and we're put here. In it. And as from one side of heaven unto the other, north is east, I mean north from the south and east from the west, where there has been any such, 
thing. As this great thing is, or has been heard like it. What's that reference to? God forgiving those Jews at the end of the tribulation period and the Messiah coming. There has never ever been such a thing. Even Moses and God bring him out of Egypt. You wait till Jesus Christ brings him out of the great tribulation period. Woo wee. That sets up Jesus as king of kings. Lord of lords. That sets up the millennial kingdom. There's been nothing like it. Ever. And I'll have part in it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire? No. As thou hast heard and lived, no one but the Jews. And anybody else says otherwise, they just said. When, when Paul heard God, Jesus Christ, there was no fire. There was no smoking. There was no burning. It was just the voice of God, Jesus Christ. Why was the fire? Why was all that? Jews require a sign. Or has God assayed? There's the first time that word shows up. Assayed. To go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation. And they would think again, America. No. God called out the nation of Israel out of Egypt. God has never taken any other nation out of another nation and called them by himself. By temptations. We saw that with the battle between Moses and Pharaoh. By signs. The water turned to blood. By all those things. The flies. The snake. The rod. By wonders. The darkness only in Egypt and not in the land of Israel. And by war. There's been war all the way since we got here. And God got the victory. By a mighty hand. And by the stretched out arm. And by great terrors. <laughs> all the things that happened in the wilderness. According to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt. Oh, we've been talking about Egypt. In Egypt. There was war in Egypt? I would only assume as that is when they gathered up as soldiers and came to the Red Sea. Before your eyes, only Israel. Look what God did in Egypt. Temptation, signs, wonder, war. And all that was because for the Jews to see the sign of God. And unto thee it was shewed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. And there is none else beside him. I like that. One God. And that's why they have a problem today with Jesus Christ. Because they're thinking Jesus Christ and God. As the Jehovah Witnesses. Well God's one and Jesus is two. Yeah but no. They're all one but they're three. They're one and three and three and one. And we can't explain that as humans. Out of heaven, he made thee to hear his voice. Ooh. So when God spoke on Mount Sinai, that voice came from heaven. And he might instruct thee. And upon the earth, he showed thee great fire. And thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Again, recapping Exodus 20. And because he loved thee, I'm excuse me, he loved thy fathers. Therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out of his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. God brought them out. They didn't do nothing. They just followed. I'm going to heaven only by Jesus Christ, not nothing I've done. To drive out nations before thee, greater and mighty than thou art. True. To bring thee in and give thee their land for inheritance as it is. As it hasn't happened yet. And Moses is already speaking past tense. Know therefore this day and consider in thy heart. That the Lord he is God in heaven above. And upon the earth beneath. There is none else. 
Isaiah 43 11 Isaiah 44 6 Isaiah 44 8 Isaiah 45 verse 5 and verse 7 there is no other God God says in Isaiah I looked around I didn't see no gods there's no other God but God thou shalt keep therefore his statutes that's what we said in the beginning and his commandments which summon up which com which I commanded thee this day that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever now when we open up verse 1 it said oh hark in Israel my only Israel is given. If you keep that law, you're going to be doing good and well. Not church age doctrine. Paul did well and look at his life. And Moses severed three cities on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. That the slayer may flee there thither, which should kill his neighbor on the way as the accidental killing. That hated him not in times past. And that fleeing, fleeing unto one of these cities, he might live. These will be the cities of refuge. Here are three of them. There will be three on the other side of Jordan in the promised land. Namely, first one, Bezer. In the wilderness. In the plain country of the Reubenites. Number two, in Ramoth. In Gilead of the Gadites. And number three, in Golan. In Bashan. Of the Manassites. So each of those tribes give one land, one city to be that city. If you accidentally kill somebody, you run to that city. You will be judged. And if you're found innocent, you will stay in that city until the death of the high priest. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel, not Gentiles, not church. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spanked unto the children of Israel. We're going to be going through them all now soon. Spanked the children of Israel even, I mean, excuse me, after they came out, after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side, Jordan, in the valley against Beth Peor. <laughs> there's that place again. Beth is house, house of Peor. In the land of Shihon, the king of Amorites. Who dwelt in Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote, after they were come forth out of Egypt. And they possessed his land in the land of, there's that guy again, Og, the king of Israel, the much. Og, the king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising, east. He's given their location again, and from Aurora, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. Mount Hermon is Sion. Sion is Mount Hermon. There's another one. And all the plain on this side of Jordan eastward, even the sea of the plain, under the springs of Pisgah. And we close with this chapter. So we're going to set forth the rules and regulations, what you're to do, what you're not to do, when you go in that land.